go, hour number three already tonight on this Thursday night. The, uh, this is the 13th already? Wow. 13th of March, 14th of March, tomorrow. I'm going to talk to Dr. Bill this hour. He's with us once a week to share uh, his views on things, has much to say about a lot of things. Hello, William. How are you? Uh, good. Uh, I'm trying to swim uh, through the tidal waves of news. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, <clears throat> isn't that the truth? It's, uh, it's like an enormous surf, uh, surge well, after surge. Well, you, ha- you have a Noah's Ark of, of uh, good information on your website. Thank you very much. I try. As I say, Fukushima Central. Um, I just want to <clears throat> announce for the audience here that they may have thought that I was going to be at the Austin, Texas conference uh, coming up on FukushimaSolutions.com, and I decided not to for several reasons. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and right. the, the first reason is, number one, uh, you know, it looks like I was the most qualified person to ask there, but they didn't ask me to review the so-called protocols for detoxifying the USS Reagan employees, which are, you know, the veterans there. Yeah. Um, number two, um, they were trying to raise money for treatment, and I, and I tell people all along, since 2008, uh, there is no cost. I, I continuously, almost every week, get people asking me, will you take my insurance, because I provide free consults. I say, I don't take insurance, it's called free. <clears throat> There's mm-hmm. no need for costs, and even if it's veterans, we're going to do a very special deal for them, basically just over cost to get them any supplements they need. Mm-hmm. And by the way, that's all they do need, supplements and some technology, mm-hmm. <clears throat> which might require energetic technology to, to fully detox them, repair their cells, and activate their stem cell repair. So they don't need a stem cell transplant. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and ideally, uh, you know, if they were really bad, uh, they would do a bone marrow transplant or store some bone marrow so if they deteriorated correct. down the road, then we can at least get them their bone marrow back. Correct, correct. But, I, uh, I, I don't understand what kind of... <clears throat> Of, of protocols and, and things were going to be recommended. I'd, well, not, I, I don't honestly, know what they're I, recommending, but they wanted me to, to basically <clears throat> do a talk two days. The first was dealing with my plans for remediation, which, by the way, I don't see anyone else giving specific concrete technical engineering design plans to fix the problem. And I keep on giving the whining arguments that they can't be fixed. Number two, yeah, I hear people that pretend and put themselves out as experts on nuclear to- toxicology. Oh, I know. I know. There's a ton of unqualified people out there who shouldn't open their mouth. I don't care if they've got a naturopathic degree, a, an MD degree, but don't have the training in neuro and radiotoxicology. I have a MDE, which is an eclectic medical degree. I don't care what they are. If they haven't had their creds, they should shut up. They should stop trying to pretend that they know these things as an opportunist and jump in. And uh, you need to also have validation. You need to prove that you've removed the radiotoxins. You need to prove that you don't have damage done to different organ systems <clears throat> because the bioaccumulation that's not only occurring in these veterans uh-huh. is just an amplification of what's going to happen down the road, say, in five years yeah. to all Americans and people in the Northern yeah. Hemisphere. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, what I don't want people to do is, number one, either give up, which a lot of people have in Japan. They basically say, well, we're all going to die. Or number two, pretend it doesn't exist. Or number three, get in bad advice and take things that are inadequate to treat the problem. That's probably the most insidious <clears throat> and, and worst uh, way to go. Right. So they, yeah. And they need to know that this is simple things like drinking clean filtered water. Do not eat any fish from the Pacific. Don't go to the beaches unless you take a radiation detector. And if it's radioactive, turn around and go home. You very, know, very I simple. can't say that the beach. Yeah, no, you're I, right. I, I, go ahead. No, no, you're right. Go ahead. I think that uh, simple advice, for example, treat your home like a hazmat. If you have a radiation, data logging, radiation detector, and I have an inspector plus, but I'm getting a data logging one so I can set up on your link on your website. Oh, but nice. I've heard some, Great. Yeah, and I've heard people make what I call Yahoo comments about how radioactive it is. You don't need to exaggerate the problem. By saying I, I, that I, I, I'm, radio- I'm, that, excuse me, Bill, but that really, really bothers me. We do, yeah. You're right. We do not need to exaggerate the problem. We've got to right. realistically analyze it, present it for what it is, right. and prove it. Right. For example, uh, does it matter if bioaccumulation at five years will make a quarter of your population get three times the risk of cancer, or if it takes 10 years? Does it take 20 years to make sure that all people in North America can't have a normal baby unless they submit their gametes to a laboratory to do polar body exclusion? And, inter- and have artificial fertilization to create an embryo, and then uh-huh. do gamete interfallopian tube embryo transplant. And people might think, well, Dr. Deagle's exaggerating. No, I'm not. This is 2014. In 20 years from now, watch what 2034, happens. Yeah. Uh, I predict that human beings, if we don't stop Fukushima, 
will not have normal children unless they submit and create a gamete intrafallopian tube transplant. That's in North America. In Japan, mm -hmm. they're dead. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're pretending that it's going to go away. And then I hear people are unqualified making statements. Now, for example, there's, and, and, and there's misstatements made by many different people, from Arne Gunderson to uh, Dr. Helen Caldicott to Chris Busby. And I have to correct every one of them on my show because when they step out of areas in which they're not expert, they're going to cause significant judgment problems. So when people make statements that the radiation levels are constantly, say, over 200 counts per minute or so many millisieverts, I'm sorry, this comes in waves. My radiation detector today was the lowest I've seen in three years, this morning. But two days ago, it was twice normal background, and it comes in waves. And when we had that radiation release last spring, mm -hmm. it was two to three times background for five weeks because it had a big radiation release, a I call a burp. Yep. And it's not going to stay stationary. Even over a period of minutes and hours, it's going to go up, and it's going to go down. And that's if we had proper radiation stations and we had commercial airliners like I recommended two years ago to Diane Feinstein and, and, and Senator Wyden in Oregon, that would simply be data logging radiation detectors in the airline cabins. But they don't want the airlines, certainly don't, and the government doesn't want you to know that they're compressing radioactive air at 25, 30,000 feet and that they're detecting radiation levels. And if they actually sent off a bottle with a chain of custody of the air, uh -huh. And did a spectral analysis using what's called neutron spectroscopy. Mm -hmm. It would give you a profile of what isotopes are present, and you can do a real-time what's called three-dimensional plume map. So you know the plume is moving at so many kilometers or miles per hour. It has a width of, say, 400 miles or 200 miles. We're talking about miles. airborne plumes here. Airborne plumes, and those airborne plumes, let's say, are between 26 and 32,000 feet. Mm -hmm. And the counts per minute when you go through that boundary zone is such and such, and our computer models could generate yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, easy. It also tell us yeah. when weather hits that if you have an intersecting hot and cold air mass, you're going to pull those down and get a radioactive rain, and it's time for people in those areas or states to act as if it's hazmat. Put on your raincoat, leave it outside, have boots, decon, have a decon shower, and basically treat it as a hazmat situation. I don't hear anybody else saying this. I worked with the nuclear division of ACOM for years. I worked with nuclear reactor people. I had hazmat suits in, in Georgia. And uh, uh, in our facilities in, in Pekin, Illinois, and mm -hmm. I worked with the radiation detector people working at Rocky Flats, and I do not see sufficient respect for the problem, and I do not need to hear yahoos exaggerating what it is. It's so awful, you don't need to exaggerate it. Really well said. I, I couldn't agree more, and it, uh, it must particularly bother somebody like you with the background you have. I mean, it bothers me to no end. I mean, I, I'm... It get, <laughs> Makes me well, sick. I worked, uh, I worked yeah. 40 years ago working on my honors and then my PhD project in marine molecular biology. And we were, I worked with radioisotopes and uh -huh. synthetic molecules. And we had uh, scintillation counters and radiate rad rooms where we'd actually expose animals and fruit flies because we were one of the first projects I helped my colleagues work on was an offshore DARPA project so the U.S. military could do nuclear, move, move troops on the ground, boots on the ground at two days after nuclear war. Mm -hmm. But not two weeks. And we just succeeded. We were testing everything from butyl hydroxytoluene to various antioxidants. Mm. And so when Paris Kidd and Steve Levine from UC Berkeley Department of Biochemistry in 1981 published their book on free radicals, I had kn knew Steve for years before that, and he wanted me to be one of the people reviewing his book because I knew from my work, which is classified, I knew about free radical and DNA damage and ion channels. So I've been at this for, it's getting close to half a century. So <clears throat> when people want to make, uh, we will call, opportunistic statements I knew and had a lot of whole profile of radiation detection nutraceuticals all designed for years because I knew this is coming. I knew every reactor in the in the world, every uh -huh. reactor, is spewing out radiation, whether it's a brain spanking new pebble bed reactor doesn't or matter. a it reactor. Doesn't matter. Everyone is releasing radiation and there's zones of damage to people Just around those radiation. Concentric sites. circle zone right around it. Right. Uh, the, uh, it'll certainly uh, predominate with the flow of the wind, but you'll have circles uh, increased rates of cancers, increased rate, you name it. It's all there. It's all measurable. It's its easy science. It's not hard. Well, well do you have any example of how bad it is? Rocky Flats. Oh, we sent a Nova yeah. team there at Rocky Flats back in 1997 when I worked under Rocky Mountain Ahmed and Reserve Admiral John Hughes. Mm -hmm. We had to contract with the Federal Superfund site out of Rocky Flats to analyze how bad the radiation was there and if there was any movement mm -hmm. because we had platforms, literally concrete platforms with containers Outside, and you know, you know, the weather in Colorado can get vicious. 
Yeah. Sitting on platforms <clears throat> or in flimsy buildings, and we want to detect if there's any radiation leaks. So they went out there without rad suits because they were told it was perfectly fine from the Shell Oil Company, their contract people who did radiation detecting. And they did ground sampling right down to the bedrock and granite, right through the mud, all the way up to the area near the North Platte River, which comes pretty close to the area. Uh -huh. And they discovered that the radiation was moving at so many meters per, per literally per month, mm -hmm. toward the North Platte River. And they detected and found plutonium, americium, all the very nasty uh, radioisotopes were heading out there, and it was so radioactive, I had to do a post, what's called a, a, a post examination, and send off all kinds of radiotoxicology samples on every one of the Nova workers because they were all freaked out that it was 10,000 times more radioactive than they thought when they went to the wow. site and they should go out there wow. without rad suits. Wow. Sickening. Uh, yeah, it's very this sickening. Is... And the damn government and the big industry takes people yeah. like me and persecutes us because we tell the truth. Of course. The, so this was, uh, is, has that debris intersected the North Platte yet? I don't know, but I can tell you it was moving at a rate that we estimated was going to hit there somewhere between 2004 and 2008. That's uh, usually it's inches a year, six, seven inches a year. They were moving pretty fast. And that's what they, uh, depends they on they the geology, of on, course. Yeah. Yeah. And what they did is they calculated out based on the rate it was moving from the clay, uh, the clay boundary zone with the granite. Mm -hmm. So that's just wow. one. We had a we had one of our liquid radioactive wastes that was heading out to a, a, a facility in Utah. Mm -hmm. And we also had a facility in a salt mine in a uh, radio outside Dallas, Fort Worth. And they had a container of liquid radioactive waste slide off the I-70 freeway in a bad storm and almost go over the embankment into the Colorado oh, River. I remember they had, that. Yeah. They had to have uh, all kinds of cables to pull it up in rail cars and a, and a winch to, to get it up because if it had fallen in, uh -huh. the entire southwest United States would be radioactive. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, people don't realize that literally... All the time, these things are happening. And there's literally open, open Superfund sites where rocks right near the Platte River in downtown Denver. And even mines are not properly managed, like the Schwartzman mine, which is a, literally above the water tables of this runoff that goes in the Grand Lake Reservoir system. Was well, uranium, uranium mine? Uranium. The highest uh -huh. concentration uranium in North America. Huh. Wow. Not the biggest mine, but the highest concentration percentage-wise. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And it was above the water table for Grand Lake. So we know when the water was coming off the Grand Lake system, it was going first to places like the uh, the uh, Lake Stanley. Mm -hmm. And so we had people out there doing testing of the water and the fish at Lake Stanley, and it was radioactive. Radioactive. Funny so, thing, I uh, never heard about that. Uh. No, no, not only that. One of our guys, and I found this out from the hazmat teams I work with and the government because I work with special guys that worked in the Department of Energy, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And they raided a guy's home after they scanned the city, which they do every week, every U.S. city, with helicopters and jets to see if there's any scintillating material that people are sequestering, i.e. a dirty bomb or whatever. <clears throat> and they raided this guy's home and pinned him to the ground and tried to find out where he had his stuff. And it was actually 120 uh, pounds, I think it was, of charcoal. He was running all the water because his water supply was coming off Lake Stanley. And he had accumulated enough radioisotopes in his basement through this water filtration to system. To trigger the, the nest helicopters. Or the they nest were helicopter running. to come in and pin them down and, or, and try to arrest them. Dirty bomb. Sa saving nuclear isotopes for Unreal. a dirty bomb. Unreal. So it was just this charcoal filter. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, if you, if you uh, have a good counter, an Inspector Plus or whatever, and you do take your return air filter on your home HVAC system, uh, let it run for four or five months, pull that filter down, and the meter it, see what you get. Fine. You, I think you'd be in for yeah, a little no, bit of a surprise. It, it's very scary. Uh, so I did that recently. A uh, tri uh, tri triple background on mine. I did one triple. Right. Right. Now, what I also need to tell people is the, uh, the the steps you need to take, and there's five or six. And they're pretty straightforward to protect yourself from accumulated biotoxins, radiotoxins. Is really straightforward. Drink clean, filtered water. We have the pure water system. Have a HEPA filter. Uh, if your radiation detector goes over a certain level. Take duct tape and seal off your windows, stay indoors, and don't go outside. If the radiation levels are high and you have to go outside, decon, just like you're, you pretend you're working on the TEPCO site. Uh, take the nutraceuticals to protect against ion channels, bioaccumulation, etc. And we have a protocol on the website. And by the way, all the protocols and all the live stream videos are all free. You don't have to pay anything. Just to buy one bottle of anything and you're good for six months to see any information or look at any of the wellness conditions and I all my did. consults. 
or free. Gives, yeah, n- nutraceutical. It's Nutramedical, N-U-T-R-I. Nutramedical. Medical, N-U-T-R-I, medical.com. Okay. If they go there, all the show archives are free, all the consults are free, and by the way, we do special deals for groups like our veterans or people like the USS Reagan, Ronald Reagan. Yeah, they're going to sure. get real special deals. And people in Japan, we sell flats of our nutraceuticals for the people being poisoned to death there. And a lot of the people regularly listen to the program have been smart enough at least to move to southern Japan or have gone further to, you know, to India or Thailand or someplace where well, it's a lot of, I'll tell you where a lot of them are going to go. There's going to be a very major deal announced soon where there's a big, big piece of Brazil is going to be open to Japanese. You watch. Oh, I can see it. They're smart. The yeah. Japanese are not going to sit there. Unfortunately, they're going to leave a lot of the population and what they're doing now with burning the debris is insane. Well, look at Abe. He's ordering people to go back into Fukushima Prefecture into areas that should be never even approached. He's ordering them to go home. Well, he believes in the death cult, the Um Shinriko cult. That's the same old, same old. You got it. Basically, what these people are believing, and this is right out of Satanism 101, they believe that if they bring on mega death and they worship the bomb, literally, that they're going to bring both the, if you want to call it in our culture, we call it Apollo or Apollyanus. They believe that they're going to bring about a transformation of culture, and they're going to become the super race. Wow. Sick. Yeah, it's very sick. And, of course, a lot of them want to bring about the fact that they want to get rid of, rid of wild reproduction. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the next 10 years, and people need to know this, our genetic engineering research is getting so advanced. And that's why you saw the Federal Death Agency jump on 23andMe, because uh-huh. they didn't want uh, if our private companies just taking people's blood or saliva. This is just a saliva test. Mm-hmm. And measuring 250 genes. Now, I live in San Diego County where they just had a company that actually got the cost down to do a full genome. We're talking about all 32,000 alleles for under $1,000. That's astonishing. $100,000, you can take a, your entire genome. Now, when they first did the test back in mm-hmm. the early 2000s, mm-hmm. it was like $14 million. And mm-hmm. now it's less than 1000 That's amazing. And That's take, truly amazing. Right. And when you take that, you know, Moore's Law ex- exponential, and you add to it their wellness and medical history, mm-hmm. uh, maybe organic acids, uh, functional evaluations, imaging studies, etc. Mm-hmm. Other technologies like the QRMA, which is a quanti- quantitative resonant magnetic analysis, and I'm becoming an expert in it now. And I've talked to the people that designed it, Dr. Yi Zhang, who took the oriental quanti- quantitative uh, magnetic analysis, which is a procedure if you had like eight years of training in an oriental uh, uh, electromedicine course, uh-huh. it would take you a whole four hours to do this test, but he's automated it down to a minute. Jeez. And then they also have a machine called a Bioplasm NLS developed by the Russian Space Agency. And even during the Cold War, they had American scientists working with them. And this Bioplasm NLS will actually section organs straight down to even the specific section of the gene, the organ and the cell type, and even the part of the cell that's out of balance. And that's it even small. tells you what nutraceuticals will work. It can rebalance yeah. your bioplasmatic body. It can tell you which nutraceuticals and or drugs work. It'll give you even a diagnosis of what pathogen's present. Um, it's amazing. It, it literally, it's more accurate than a CT scan, an MRI scan, or well, an ultrasound. And, and it shows anatomically a section of the tissue. It shows you exactly where the problem is. Star Trek. Yeah, it's, star, it's, it's beyond what Star Trek had. Let's put it that way. It's be, way beyond. And, this is right now, today, way beyond what Star Trek and, mm-hmm. you know, the, mm-hmm. the people have. And we have mm-hmm. it today. And so what I do is I have people where if they purchase a machine from me, and I, I know the right ones, you want to get the right machine. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of knockoffs <clears throat> in China because that's the way they do business. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will do the analysis of the data and tell you what to do, whether it's conventional tests, nutraceuticals, et cetera, to fix the problem. And if you want to do tests because you're real skeptical and you want to go to the labs, you can even do them like directtest.com. And it, you can order the test yourself online. I'll say, or test A, B, C, D. You can do blood, urine, stool, whatever, antibodies. Hmm. You can order tests from something like Cyrex Labs to measure if you've got gluten sensitivity or cross-reacting antibodies. Mm-hmm. You can measure cancer cell markers. There's marker tests now that are 100% accurate. They can take one blood sample and tell you you've got cancer. So, uh, you know, right now, medicine's under revolution. And so the Federal Death Agency, that's what I call them instead of the FDA. Uh, of course. They want to shut it down because within a decade, human beings will be able to even upgrade and find out what their gene defects are. And later do two things, protofect or fix their mitochondria genetically while you're alive. And number two, fix any gene defects or SNPs yeah. you have that cause you to have problems. Validate what toxins you have in your body and remove them. And basically, uh, we are approaching what I call the singularity of human lifespan, which means 
if you have proper maintenance schedules, proper genetic upgrades, proper non-toxic environment, mm -hmm. there's no reason why people have to die. We're there. 20, 20 years ago, the FDA was after, remember what they were after? Dark field microscopes. Those were the big oh. bad. They used to try and they shut those down as fast as they could. Yeah. Isn't that obscene? Yeah, it's obscene. That's what it is. Totally it's obscene. Same like the Rife microscope, which, by yeah. the way, the people have tried to reproduce it, but they haven't been able to do it properly. No, they couldn't get the one that exists uh, to work. Running they tried. But I'll tell you yeah. what, the, the step up from the Rife microscope is the, is the Bioplasm NLS. And people want to know about it. I, you know, as I say, uh, my father had a saying, which is, he was pretty smart, is if I know what you know and I know, I'll know more than you. So I'm like a, like a, <laughs> like a, a <laughs> I'm like always trying to get a data download for people I think are smarter or have more knowledge in a specific area. And then I'm firing, you know, like a minigun, zillions of questions at them. So pretty soon they realize that I'm now going beyond their database and reinventing their science. So I'm trying to reinvent the QRMA machine and the Bioplasm NLS, and I'll be working with the Scientists at the Russian agency that are actually making these to move to the next level. Cause oh, I, fascinating. I, fascinating. Yeah. So, my plan in the next year or so is to move it forward to things like, uh -huh. uh, you know, like what Spock had, which is, you know, the tricorder to actually analyze specific frequencies. Right. Uh, there's a company in Italy that was working on the same principles. And, and this is six, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. They had a wand you can scan over somebody. And they were actually doing it out on a square. And the uh, wand was picking up the specific frequencies that are related to cancer, the harmonic mm -hmm. uh, frequencies from the body. Mm -hmm. And it was like 98% accurate. So you can scan over somebody and go, bleep, it means they had cancer. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, and, and now, you, uh, okay, we got to take a break here. Uh, Nutramedical.com. Now, you have a water purifier there? We have the uh, pure, uh, yeah, the pure water system is the best water in the world. We have Bev 100 snaps in your tap in two minutes. Bev 300 under the counter. Bev 200, which is a tackle box. It's an emergency one with a 12 volt uh -huh, pump. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We have a whole house system for pulling all the garbage out, and it's the whole house is one third the cost of any of the other systems commercially out there, and it's better, and you can service it yourself. Okay, well, slow motion. The, the name again. Nutri Medical. N U T R I. No, I got that. The name of your water. Pure system. water system. Pure water, water system. system. They go to the products of our companies. We have okay. an incredible range, all the way from mild hyperbarics to all right. You know, Proline, low ELF saunas to all kinds of things. Uh, that's uh, something you I need to get to. a solution for every chronic health problem you can imagine from right. dementia to congestive heart failure. Well, you, you have put radiation. together, without question, uh, the world's foremost nutraceutical all around health catalog that uh, I've ever seen. Okay, and we're seen. working on We have two new products that are coming out next month. One is the final solution for irritable bowel syndrome colitis. It's a, hmm. special, form of, a special form of carnitine that has a special envelope on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're always working on new products. I'm already Pre in the preface, right now. preface with no more meat, uh, no more dairy of any kind. That's uh, one right. of the, the keys. Uh, hold on, yeah. Bill. Will you please? We got no, you mean a you mean pus formed a dairy? I don't. That's drink dairy. the one. I, uh, I drink almond breeze, which is almond coconut milk. Pus milk. That's what it is. Be right back. <laughs> Okay, and welcome back. Talking to Bill Deagle, as we do about many things. Uh, it's uh, it's a situation that even Gunderson, in his uh, remarks of yesterday, said we'll be here for at least a hundred years. They can't. They won't even be able to begin to approach to fix the ongoing hemorrhage into the ocean of liquid death for a hundred years. It, I, it could I don't be more that than that at all. I, uh, I, I, in fact, it makes me vilely angry when I hear comments like that, and that's why I wrote this paper. Why? Okay. Could, Here, let and, me ask and, you a question. I want, I want this notice to get out to scientists yeah. and people. Where, oh, talking. where? Where is the paper? You need to send me the new, the new version. I'm going to have to have the updated paper. I'm making the ebook too. When I hear these kind okay. of comments from Gunderson or anyone else, they need to step back, take a deep breath, and realize we are the most brilliant, imaginative, creative being. We're not just a physical being. We are a spiritual being that has the capacity to create our own future. And when you speak negative thoughts, negative realities, and negative timelines. Well, they're self-fulfilling. They're self-fulfilling, okay? Just like somebody says, I remember I had a patient once, this is about 32 uh, years ago, and she kept coming into my office every week, and she says, Dr. Deagle, I've got cancer. i got cancer. Feel me. And I'd feel her liver, and I'd feel her spleen, and I'd poke down around her bowel and make sure there's no big lumps. And she wasn't heavy. 
But one time she didn't show up for one week, and then the second week, and the third week, and then finally she showed up and she looked like she lost about 25, 30 pounds. And I said, I better check you. Her liver was down, she had lumps in her abdomen, and her spleen was enlarged. So I said, I'm scheduling right away. We're going to do a, bring you over to Rocky Mountain Surgical U- Unit. And I was there with the head surgeon, and we opened her up from her ziphoid at a rib cage right down to her pubic symphysis. And we palpated it. And the way you did back then, you didn't just do a CT because you didn't have rapid access. You'd actually do what's called a physical palpation of where the tumors were. Uh huh. Right? And uh, we went down to what's called Douglas Poach, the pericolic gutters, the liver, the spleen, checked around her lymph node chains, et cetera. She was just salted totally. So all we could do was close her up. When she didn't have a bowel obstruction, we just said, that's it. And she was dead in a few weeks. And when I hear these kind of comments, we won't get into it in 100 years. If mankind doesn't get into 100 years, human beings won't reproduce in 20 years. Human biology will be so destroyed. Yeah, there won't be anybody left. That, yeah, people will be, uh, they basically, when you add it to radiotoxins, to electrotoxins, all the other nasty It looked like a George people. Romero movie. Right. Not only that, people have to understand What's happening in Fukushima is a major contributor along with geoengineering of the upper atmosphere mm-hmm. and decrease in the magnetosphere for the ozone hole disappearing and for the destruction of biological things called a carbon oxygen cycle. And like I said before, if the, if the so-called brilliant elite were smart enough, they would have not talked about peak oxygen or peak fuel or peak carbon dioxide, which is dangerous, they say, or peak fossil fuels. They would have talked about peak oxygen. Because they're giving the world by chopping down the rainforest for cocaine and industry right. uh, in South America. And by poisoning the upper atmosphere, they're killing the entomycorrhizae lichens, allow the trees like the big mm-hmm. uh, sequoia trees in California and elsewhere to die. Mm-hmm. And they're killing the oceans. There's 20,000 dead zones, some of them several hundred thousand square miles. Now the dead zone in the uh, Gulf of Mexico is allowing Australian jellies to come in because they don't need oxygen. And Are they already destroy- there? Yeah, they're there. You and know the that the, is, the Gulf thing is not even talked about anymore, Bill. And no, they're really... still using, by the way, they don't use the corrects on the surface. They actually are injecting it at the wellhead and at the ocean floor to make sure that they, none of it ver- visually gets to the surface. But it's well, still the first, the first time a hurricane is allowed to get through or something and it turns that up, you're going to see a lot of oil real quick. Right, now, but it's still coming with shrimp with old eyes. What, and, oh, it's, it's terrible. The Gulf is dead. Nobody should right. eat anything from the Gulf either. Here's what really bothers me, and we kind of started out on this tonight. When the Gulf blowout happened, it wasn't uh, <laughs> but a blink of an eye before the, uh, the ghouls and the opportunists showed up with their snake oil. Detox kits, you name it, and it really right. made me sick. They were taking advantage of people who were afraid, who were clearly becoming ill in some cases, who clearly didn't know where to go, and it was a confidence game, and they were, give us your money, we'll heal you. But when you see that, run, folks, run. Right. By the way, if you're detoxing from chemicals, you need the your mineral levels restored, you need the uh, cofactors uh, for your detox pathways, which are pretty straightforward. We have a product called uh, Life Support and BioLVR. VR. You need to have methylation, glucuronidation, sulfation, etc. You need to stop the free radicals, and you need chemical detox with the Zeno. Uh, estrogenic, you know, molecules, <clears throat> and what happens is, it's very straightforward. Mm-hmm. You always need energetic technology. We, our, we, I work with a lot of the vets from Gulf War, from uh, the World Trade Center, uh-huh. and our protocol. And you had to use infrared sauna. We have the Proline Low, basically zero electromagnetic frequency because the, the best elements are these carbon three hundred and sixty elements. Mm-hmm. But you need a lot of energy in order to mobilize the chemicals out of your body. Right. And if you don't use pulse magnetic field and infrared light therapy, you can't get the chemicals out. It doesn't matter how many mm-hmm. you know IV chelations you do, you can't get it out. You mm-hmm. have to use energetics. Infrared light therapy. Tell me more. Well, <clears throat> the uh, Proline sauna, basically, the way it does, it's the highest energy sauna, and it's the, it has zero, basically zero uh, electromagnetic frequency. Can you put this power through a step-down transformer, which are these elements? Mm-hmm. You're going to generate quite a bit of uh, a milligauss of radiation. Mm-hmm. So you want elements that are designed that don't do that, but generate a lot of near and far infrared light. And when it hits the tissues, it activates what's called the cytochromes, and it mobilizes these chemicals out of these sequester compartment in your fat and your deep tissues and your yeah, liver yeah. and spleen and your ner- nervous system. And many of the diseases we see nowadays, like dementia, heart disease, breast cancer, et cetera, uh-huh. are just bioaccumulation. Huh. Bioaccumulation of chemicals that are everywhere. Yeah. Fluoridated molecules, and by the way, the molecules spontaneously generate. So when you have fluoride in water, it attaches to the amide group of amino acids and forms fluoramines, which are 
If you think fluoride's bad, fluoramines are 10 million times more toxic than fluoride. Oh, wow. Same with, same with chlorine. If you make chloramines, they are 10 million times more regular chlorine, chlorine mm -hmm. itself, chlorine gas or mm -hmm. dissolved. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this, this thing is very straightforward, but you have to understand the technology. And it's not like a, a just pop this and it's done. And by the way, once you're toxic, you're going to be detoxing for the rest of your life. And, you know, I honestly tell people, people say to me, how long do you need a detox? I say, how long do you want to live? You're living in a world where there's seven new chemicals every day. And now we have total load. We've got electrotoxins from smart meters and Wi-Fi networks. We've got radiotoxins oh, from Fukushima yeah. and nuclear plants. And now we've got <clears throat> GMO food. And if you feed GMO soy and corn to animals and you're mm -hmm. stupid enough to eat them, mm -hmm. you're going to get the same kind of cancers as the animal that died mm -hmm. in your mm -hmm. genetic horror. Yep. You know, as I tell people, if I couldn't get... I like just chicken. I don't even eat fish hardly anymore. But if I have some chicken once in a while, it has to be organic. And the animals have to be treated properly, you know, humanely. And they have to be not fed, genetically modified. And to me, it's very obscene that George Bush Sr. was the one who made a deal with Mount Satan, I call him, to make sure that we couldn't get proper labeling. Because if we could, the GMO would go away tomorrow. Proper labeling, no more GMO. All true. Course, that's why the Chinese wouldn't even take our are genetically modified corn because they know the Austri Austrian and German research in it because said it caused so they can read. They understand. They can read, they can read reports in German and say, oh my gosh, yeah. von H corn makes you sterile. No sperm so count. Bye-bye. See ya. Yeah. All true. Hold on a second, though. We'll be right back. Uh, Nutramedical.com. A uh, wealth of uh, extraordinary products there for you. Stand by. We'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with Dr. Bill and you. All right, uh, Bill, in short, give us your general ideas on how to address Fukushima at this point. What would you do? If you were king, what would you order? Uh, the first thing I'd do is I'd order uh, the top nuclear scientists of all the major countries to have an international symposium and put it on all the cable channels, on the online, uh, even have the audio so people internationally could listen on a phone anywhere in the is world. This, is this to hold them accountable? What are you, what are you doing? Well, it is to, I, it's basically, this is a point that goes beyond accountability to just literally hashing out ideas to deal with it. I proposed after three years of analyzing, praying, studying on this, and working with my nuclear experts like Chris Harris, that's his radio name, Yeah. specific technical answers that could that basically, I want these people, if they're so smart, to challenge them to say why this can't be done. Uh, hydraulic and pneumatic robots a seawall with a filtration system to filter everything, including strontium, which, by the way, they've never filtered it. They're supposed to have a filtration system to concentrate it so they don't have uh, millions of tons work. of radioactive water. Work. There should be no water going out of there unless it's basically at such a low level mm -hmm. it can be easily dumped back in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. uh, why did they try to put an ice wall, and they're actually starting the ice wall below it? They should have had a project to move it and defer all that water above the plant away three years ago. So there's no aquifer running underneath the plant. Correct. Uh, our two enemies are neutrons and water. And I give specific technical reasons. If we had an international symposium, people like Mishu Kaku, the physicist from Japan, and top experts could have an open forum that could have answers from grandmothers that would pose good questions. People would pose ideas. They'd throw, for example, papers like mine forward and say, what do you think of Deagle's idea? And if it doesn't work, keep working with it till it does. Uh, I think we need to realize as human beings we need to stop waiting for somebody else to do it, a government, an official, or a specific individual. We are, in a sense, with things like the Internet, we are becoming collectively a super brain. And this is why programs like this, we're almost like I say, Jeff, you and I are, are, are retinal cells in the fovea or the center of the vision of the eye of the mankind. Interesting and construct. We're, doing basically, we're yeah. transferring that information to the brain and to the legs and arms of mankind to say, mm -hmm. let's deal with this as a collective being, because we are, we're cells in a body, right. and let's let the human race recover from this and learn that you don't boil water with radioisotopes. Let's learn that you don't to proliferate nuclear material, nuclear uh, reactors like Rosatom that Russia is spreading, or America proliferating this with General Electric. And by the way, the lawsuits against General Electric will probably bankrupt them, uh, GE. But, but the problem is that the world is carrying these liabilities because all these plants have all the material. Another stupid move that's going on besides that is hydrofracking, you know. Oh, that's, uh, that's, using that's chemicals. absolutely proliferating as fast as you, you can't even believe yeah, how Even fast if you don't use chemicals, you use up a lot of water. Yeah. And you also get water. They did, by the way, the, the Division of Mines at the University of Colorado did this back in the uh, early 80s. And they actually were pumping water into one of the natural fault zones in, uh, up in 
uh, near Boulder, and they mm-hmm. actually caused, I think it was a, like a 4.2 earthquake. Well, it may be that the whip disaster was called by fracking. They got 100 wells, oil, and gas sure within uh, one mile that, of the uh, facility. That, that's, that's where my money is. There's natural fault zones that run to that salt mine. Right. And when they hydrofracked, it changed the sub, the, basically the stability of the salt yeah. and started to yeah. liquefy some of it, so they probably had subsidence of the floor. Well, the, the roof cave in. That's what they say. Yeah, the roof cave in. They all, also, there's some evidence that they may have had a floor a floor cave in as well as a roof. Uh-huh. Well, and so, surprised. Nobody's going to go down there and, and deal with this crap. They've broken the casks open. They can't go near it. No way. Well, they need to have operational Up to seal. Off. They're going to try and seal it off, and it's going to go in the groundwater. So the wells right. will begin sucking up uh, heavily toxic and polluted radioactive hydrocarbons of either, you know, gas, oral oil. It doesn't matter. Right. Well, for example... This little robot they sent in two years ago at reactor, I think it's number two. Uh-huh. They said, well, they can't move it because it's, you know, all blocked off by buildings and the swirling vortex yeah. of high energy electrons. It's just yeah, simple. Yeah, yeah. You send in a second robot that has an antenna. So you basically what's called repeat it. In other words, you send another robot that's a little closer, but mm-hmm. close enough you can communicate with your other robot. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we got to think out of the box. That's and, smart. Uh, uh-huh. and, and how many international conferences have we had so far? None. Zero. None. And you see, I, I'm going to listen. Here's what I'm going to do, Jeff. Maybe you can help me. I have a thing called live stream, and I can do a multi point conference. So I'm going to get the live stream staff to help me do this, mm-hmm. where people need don't need to fly anywhere. They can go on their computer or even their iPad or iPhone. They can log on. We're going to try to make it a minimal cost or no cost at all. So all they need to do is go on there, and we're going to have experts from all over the place. And all those experts need to do is they can sit in their study or their studio or their lab. And just simply log on with a computer, and if they have a PowerPoint prepared, or if they just want to show their face on the screen, or show papers, or news articles that they want to talk about, we want the public to get the information out there, and we want people to embarrass the scientists and the politicians into mm-hmm. doing something. Mm-hmm. You see, the greatest evils on the earth are by uh, omission, whether it's fixing the financial system. Oh, no, the lie with, of omission. That is absolutely it. I the agree. greatest evils on I earth are, pro- are uh, omission. For example, yeah. the omission of not realizing... Uh, for example, we'll, we're, we're going to weaponize and give, say, weapons of mass destruction to the satanic Sabbatean state of Israel so that and the other satanic state of Saudi Arabia can decide to attack Iran and start World War III. You know, or, or we're going to interfere with the actual structure of what has always been in the sphere of influence of Orthodox Russian you know, Christianity, which includes Belarus, Belarus uh, and Ukraine, and then say we're going to them to be sucked into the vortex of the evil now what I call secular, agnostic, and satanic states of Europe, which are basically godless now by and large. And I remember one of my friends in Europe said they maintain the churches because they like architecture, but really religion is dead in Europe. Right? And I, and yeah. and I tell people, I said, just explore religion. If you explore and are honest, eventually you're going to come to the conclusion that the real uh, religion, that's the only religion that's quote, true on earth, is the true version, and it's hard to find it, of what I call real, what I call Christianity. And by the way, most of the churches are not preaching the whole gospel. They're preaching gobbledygook or, or what I call paganism. Uh, most of the churches here in America are ridiculous, especially the mega churches. They tell you, submit to the to your masters. How uh, they're dying. They teach you foolishness like raptures. And uh-huh. of course, uh, they teach they're millennials. Fairy tales. It's just all Fairy tales, foolishness, silliness. Yeah. And it doesn't teach responsibility. It doesn't teach... How do uh, that faith is never blind? Did you teach people blind faith? Blind faith makes you an automaton. Of course it does. God didn't tell you to leave your brain at the door when you became a believer. He told you to use it. You know? Uh, Couldn't be I, more I, correct. I, almost everything I hear from the mouth of the so-called pastors in America and around the world oh, is it's embarrassing. lies. Lies. Absolutely embarrassing. And it doesn't, it doesn't deviate from the fact that there is a truth out there, and that's why I try to preach in a sense on my site and my and it doesn't mean legalism either you know it means relationship it means relationship with each other which firstly starts out with honesty like we're doing on you do on your show because you're i consider probably the best broadcaster researcher uh interviewer on the planet well uh you you know i I try my best i mean we we both try our best that's what we do well you know i i talk too fast and i get technical so i have lots of warts but people will will suffer that because they know the kind of information I'll have is is second to none. Uh, they'll suffer it. They'll say, well, he talks too fast, but I can email him. Or I'll try to play it back slower and get the Barry White version of it and see if you can understand <laughs> what he's saying. That's good. That's so, very but, good. You know, as yeah. I say, that, the fact that I'm real, though, and I've got defects, makes it even more believable because I realize it's not scripted. It's not made up. 
There's no agenda. Uh, no, you what speak right from your heart. You speak right from the heart. Uh, yeah, when people realize uh, there's no, not even a cost. That's why when I hear people starting to raise money to help the, the veterans at the, at the oh, regular. Oh, please. Why, I, no. why do you need to raise money? I mean, we're going to do what we can to help these guys at cost, if necessary, for the supplements and no cost at all for the consults. So, you know. Well, for me, I'd give it away, you know, like you. I just. Uh, yeah, we just give it away. It's like, you know, honestly, there is no future. What. You and I are both saying, basically, we're like silver trumpets, like it says in the Bible. We're basically like the silver trumpet saying, if you don't pay attention now, there'll be nothing to pay attention to in this near future. That's right. Nothing. I mean, we're, we're not talking about any sentient No, we're, beings, we're on the edge. We're, we're at the edge of the abyss. And it doesn't need to be. We can have, mm -hmm. this is a bright future in the 21st century mankind can choose. We can choose a future where, in the next 10 years, dying of genetic polymorphisms or toxic polypharmacy or toxic environmental illness causing disruption of your genome and your yeah. epigenome, yeah. which causes you to live abundantly for a thousand years or ten thousand years or whatever. Right. The only thing that's going to stop you is stupid behavior like jumping out of a plane in a bat suit or being hit by a meteor or a gamma burst. Exactly right. Uh, we should have a world where war is obsolete, we, where we truly, you know, hammer our, our swords of implements of war into plowshares where we respect other living things, including stop high energy sonar that's disrupting the sound uh, systems and the navigation systems of the great we whales. Have a long the list, a long list. It's so obscene that they're doing this, these beautiful creatures out there in the ocean. And then I hear all the people protesting about the blackfish and about the orca orchinus. These mm -hmm. animals are on the intelligence level of a teenager, mm -hmm. human teenager. They're not mm -hmm. stupid. And they communicate, they go in pods, they literally stay together for life. Uh, if you've ever watched them hunt it. together, uh, you get the picture. Uh, it's right, amazing. I, I call them the wolves of the sea. Yeah. And the fact is, you see, I like that side of that, that, that Star Trek movie years ago. And it said, you know, the ETs were listening and they heard the, the, the silence of the last whale die. And they realized it was time to come and destroy Earth. It's time, and, friends. And I'm not, I'm just, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I'm just saying... No, it's time you know, to come and you know, save Earth. Let's, uh, let's do that. Uh, yeah, I really think a lot of the... We need an ultimatum like the day the Earth stood still. We need an ultimatum. You stop or you're toast. Simple. I think, uh, as, as I say, uh, I don't want to see a false, like an ET version show up to try to see if they could scam people. But I really believe that people need a wake-up call, and Fukushima should have been, but it's not. People are not, still not, asleep. No, I, they are absolutely They're asleep. No. And then even when Putin stands up and and, and stops World War Three last summer, they should have given the Nobel Prize. Now they're they're, they're bedeviling him, saying he's a he's a monster. Well, that's our our Western media playing. Uh, uh, it, it's all sickening. I, <laughs> yeah, I'm totally fed up with the parts of the human race. Fed up. Oh, all. Disgusting. Bill, yeah. thank you uh, for being here. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the wonderful work you always do. And, yeah, well, uh, try to do the best, as I say. My days, weeks, and year, number, years are numbered, but I hope to bless those here now, maybe 10,000 years from now, that we always have to remember we are a one. And we are I and we at the same time. In the past, present, future, and there's a spark of divinity in all of us, in every living thing, right from the plant to the tree to the great whales, yeah. in everything. Agreed. Thank you. Take care. Talk soon. Take Bill. care, everybody.